is in our hearts and our minds on this prayer and meditation is that we focus on Yahweh, who we know as God, the Most High, the Elohim, Adonai, Elohim meaning the living God. Alone is worthy to be worshipped, to be praised, to be magnified. The Bible has declared that we should enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. So before we even begin to start a service, we want to make sure our hearts are pure. That we make sure our souls are right, that our spirits are right, that we may feel the manifestation of his glory. For he alone is worthy to be worshipped, to be magnified and adored. Oh Lord, we love you today. Come on, place your hearts and your minds on him. Come on, begin to lift up worship. Father, we worship you. We worship you, Lord. We magnify
this day that frees us and, and removes doubt. It heals us. It delivers us. Hallelujah. Bless your name. There's something about the name that you wear. Yes, yes. There's something about you and it frees us. There's something about your name that you wear.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless his name, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You alone deserve my worship. You alone.
prodigal. The prodigal. What, what is a prodigal? Okay? And so it reads as follows. That's Luke 15, 11. And he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. Notice he said them. Yeah. So the bigger brother, the older brother, actually got what he was supposed to get after the father passed away. Right. But we're going to continue. And not many days after the younger brother, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all there arose a mighty famine in the land and he began to be in want and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into his field to feed swine. When he says to join it means to connect, to link up to. Basically this brother who didn't need a job when he was with his father got a job when he left his father yeah. because he went broke. Yeah. Okay? So he, had, he was forced to work. Right? Feeding the very things that he wouldn't even eat because he was Hebrew. He was an Israelite. And he would fain have, and fame means to be glad. He would have gladly, he would have gladly eaten, have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. Now what husky is, husky is like the outer portion of a of a, a large seed, right? Or a fruit or a vegetable. It's the skin of the thing. Like yeah. when you look at the when you look at a grapefruit or a, an orange or something like that, that's what he would have filled his belly with had somebody allowed him to. Right? And when he came to himself, he said, How many higher servants of my fathers have bread enough to spare and I perish with hunger? He said, How, how many of my father's servants have bread enough to give away? Yeah. They have enough of them and to give out to others. And I sit here in hunger, ready to perish. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven mm -hmm. and before thee, meaning in your eyesight. I am no more worthy to be called thy son and make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. So he did exactly what he said he going to do. Yeah. He was in the place saying, hey, look, man, I sinned against heaven in your eyesight and I'm no longer worthy to be your son. And he did exactly that. You know how we are sometimes. We we sit, we have these moments where we're by ourselves mm -hmm. and we know we should apologize and we know what we should say to the individual. But when we get in the presence of the individual, we won't apologize at all. Everything that the spirit was trying to tell us to say, yeah. we wouldn't say because now we're in our carnality, we're in our flesh, and we feel too prideful to say anything. Yeah. You know, that's how we are. That's how everybody is, just for the most part. Yeah. But the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him. And put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fat calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to be merry. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The thing about this message is many people think that this is an evangelistic message. Yeah. You should be able to reach the, those who are sinful. But, but remember the young man, yeah. he was with the father. Yeah. So this is really for those who are have been saved or grafted in. Mm -hmm. This is not just for the unbeliever, though it can be used for the unbeliever. It's also used for the believer. Yeah. Because 
because sometimes we're in this position right here. The Most High will bless us with some things. And we'll walk away from Him after He's blessed us. And then after we've squandered it, we want to come back. Oh Lord. You know, we want to do what they did back in ashes and rip our shirts and, oh Lord, I'm, you know, pity me. Just yeah. like your son. I'm no longer worthy to be your son. Come on. So we start looking at, at ourselves in, in such an unworthy way. But the son was still a son. Yeah. He was just out there. Yeah. Righteous living. Right? Reprobate. He was a prodigal. He wasn't a reprobate. He was a prodigal. He was a prodigal. What, what is prodigal? Because sometimes, you know, I, I'm going to be honest with you. Sometimes we can, we can be in the church. Yeah. And then sometimes when you're preaching to the choir, you assume that individuals know exactly what you mean. When you say prodigal, come on, yeah. come on. we just assume this. Yeah, well, we've got to get away from that, but we assume that people know what prodigal means. Mm -hmm. So, what are some similar words to prodigal? Thriftless, yeah, excessive, mm -hmm. irresponsible, mm -hmm. and self-indulgent. Yeah, that is down to broaden our perspective of what it really is, mm -hmm. so then we can take this. And apply it to our lives and see if we're prodigal. Yeah, yeah. Because you can be prodigal and sit in the pews. Yeah. You can be prodigal and sit in the pews. Yeah. There's thousands, if not millions, of prodigals sitting in the pews, paying ten percent of their money or more, serving at the doors, but they're prodigal. That's the truth. I'm gonna show you where they prodigal in a little bit. So what's the definition? Those are similar words. What's the definition of prodigal? It says spending money or resources freely and recklessly, wastefully extravagant. Mm -hmm. Okay? It goes on further to say, one who extends money extravagantly or without necessity. Mm -hmm. One that is profuse or lavish in any expenditure. A spendthrift. A waster. Yeah. A waster. And sometimes, if we're not careful, the things that the Most High gives us, if we don't pray mm -hmm. unto the Most High for direction, yeah. when He blesses us with certain things, we can be very wasteful yes. with what He gives us. Yes. And then we'll find out months or years later, when we should have been able to apply what He's blessed us with to help so-and-so, yeah. we don't have it now. Right. And so we then we go back to our remembrance and say, you know what, if I would have just... Sometimes we can act like prodigals, even though we're not prodigals. Sometimes we can act like a prodigal. So there's, how do you become a prodigal? There's, there's three ways that you become a prodigal. But I want to touch on five prodigals. Five prodigals. Five prodigals. The first one is... The prodigal mind. Mm -hmm. Prodigal mind. Now look, look, look. The son, the younger son, do you think that he just woke up one day without a thought and just said, Daddy, give me what belongs to me? Mm -hmm. All of what we've earned together, give me my half. That's basically like saying, remember, it was supposed to be an inheritance. Yeah. Yeah. Meaning it was after the father had passed away. Right. But he said, basically what he was saying, Daddy, you dead to me, give me my stuff. I want to go have fun, you know. Can you imagine he's out there? Yeah. Remember, he has servants of all kinds. He has all kinds of people working for him. You know, they're in a pretty good position. I, I, would, I would even further go to say that he's wealthy. Right. Right? To have hired servants. Right. I mean, he was paying people. These weren't slaves. He would hire people in. Could you imagine the people that came by his house, came by it, dwelling, and just passing through? And some of these guys who were off in that far lane mm -hmm. that he heard about, you know, you know, the Las Vegas at the time. Yeah. He out there, you know, everything popping. Yeah. You know, you know how it is. Oh man, you should have been there. And you know, he's a young boy and he's listening to these stories. Mm -hmm. He's listening to these stories over and over and over again. How great it is out there. Yeah. How wonderful it is out there. What the women do for nothing out there. Yeah. And he's like, oh my goodness. If I just get, you know, if I just get my money, 
when I, what my daddy owes me before he died. If I could just get that and go out here, I can have some real good fun. I can have some really good fun yeah. with, with the finances my daddy got. You know, so what happens? He has to think about it. He has to think. That's a thought. That's, that's in his mind. You don't just up and just go do some things. Right. You think about those things first. I'm sure even in, in this time, you know, dads would be way more strict than what they are now. Yeah. So I can imagine that what the father, what he thought his father was going to do to him. So he probably sat there and pondered for a while. I don't know, man. My dad, my dad kind of crazy. I don't know. You know, I know how it goes here. But he still went to go do it. And that's why you have to be very careful when it comes to the mind. And what enters into your mind. See, we think, even as adults, that we have great filters. But you have to be very careful. Not just what you see while you what what you allow to enter into your mind while you're awake, mm -hmm. but when you're sleeping. Yeah. See, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother round. People think that. People think that, oh, you know, it doesn't bother me because, you know, I'm, I'm so spiritual, I'm so heavenly minded. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm good, I'm strong. Yeah. But Satan, man, I'm telling you, if any little crack mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he will try to enter into, because all he wants to do is steal, kill, and destroy. And people keep playing with it. Yeah. As if he's going to have mercy on you. Mm -hmm. There's no mercy for him. So he's not going to show you mercy. He's not going to show us mercy. Yeah. So the son, he had a powerful mind. Right? That's why, that's why it tells us to, that's why the scripture tells us to be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing yeah. of your mind. Yeah. Transform. That means it goes from looking one way to another way. Yeah. Right? What that other way should be. It should go from carnality, right, to the mind of Yeshua. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Because it tells us to allow this mind to be in you that was also yeah. in Christ Jesus. That's it. That's it. it tells us. So we don't think that we can have the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. Because some, some preachers stood up and told us that. Yeah. We hear, oh, all of sin. As, of course, all of sin that falling short of yeah. his glory. But he tells us to have the mind. If you, meaning, if you have the mind of Christ, the thoughts, your thought pattern, would be different. And when you think certain thoughts, then that means your actions and your heart is going to be different as well. Yeah. Because what happens? He goes from being just a prodigal in the mind to a prodigal in the heart. From a prodigal in the mind yeah. to a prodigal in the heart. See, it says, whatever man thinking in his heart, so is he. Yeah. Meaning the heart has a mind of its own. You think it does? It says right here, it says the heart. The heart is deceitful above all things yeah. and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And it goes on to say, there's only one person who can know that heart. Amen. That's the Lord. Amen. Yahweh, the Most High. He's the only one who can know the heart. See, that's why it's very, it's very damaging to tell a child or a person, follow your heart. Yeah. Follow your heart. I, would you, would you follow, let, let's just put it plainly. Would you follow somebody that you know is desperately wicked? And he's people among all things. You would follow him. So why are you going to follow your heart? Why are you going to follow this thing inside of you? That's going to draw you away. He tells us that with your mouth you honor me. But with your heart you're far from me. Come on, come on. So why would we follow this thing inside of us. When he tells us that it's wicked. Come on, come on. Desperately wicked. Yes. Meaning it can do ill would do anything to deceive you. So yeah, we don't tell our kids to follow your heart. Because that's not scriptural. The food around would be, we have to cut them out of places. Like jail and everything. And coming up to the school and, you know, constantly having, no, no. We never find ourselves in careers for 10, 20 years and bored and just out of their mind. They could be wealthy and crazy at the same time. Yeah, that's good. So we went from a, in the in the mind to a particle in 
in the heart. So you gotta be careful because when it uploads here and it downloads here, then what happens then? You become prodigal in your deeds. You become prodigal in your deeds. Now you might say, nah, not me. Not me. But when you're prodigal, when you have left, your mind is basically left. You've already made up your mind. This is the way I want to go. Yeah. It's already in your heart. So all you have to do is basically drum up the courage or the carnality to go do it. And then that's when you find yourself in prodigal deeds. Yeah. Now he, he found himself out here. Look, he went out there, took all that he had, took all that he had and the money. He took the bag to him, right? I'm sure because his dad had the money that he had, I'm sure he jumped out there with a donkey. Right? He jumped out a donkey on a donkey. Yeah. He jumped out there a donkey on a donkey. Right? And had all his stuff and his bag. And he began to travel to that far land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he went to that far land. Could, could you imagine that's like when you see those movies and those people are driving it. They're driving into um, Las Vegas. And all you see is desert, desert, desert. It's a long strip, a long highway they tell you, look. Man, it's miles and miles and miles before you get to a gas station. So you might want to fill up before you take this journey. And so just imagine, he went all the way to that place, that, that far place that he heard about, that those people were coming, you know, telling them stories about. And just like in the movie, when you, when you see it and you begin, to, you begin to drive and you get closer and closer, and then you go over the horizon and all you see it's lights, yeah. glitz and glamour. You're like, ooh, man, it's about to go <laughs> down. I got, I got the bag, I got my donkey, I got my stuff. You know what I mean? I'm sure, I'm sure he was nicely manicured and taken care of. Why? Because he was wealthy enough to be taken care of. And so he went into this place, and then he found himself spending money. You know, you know how it is when, when you got, when you got a bag and you didn't earn the bag. Yeah. You see, that's that's different. Sometimes when people give you money, you know how kids you can give kids a hundred dollars. They they don't appreciate no hundred dollars. Yeah. They gonna go right through it, or they gonna try to be slick and try to keep their hundred and spend your hundred. That whatever you know, that's that's a side part for those who don't think kids do that kind of stuff. But that's what they do. So we got the bag. So we out there spend, you know, and and the brother even. The brother made him know that he was with hearts. Yeah. I mean, he went right out there looking for women. And he knew it was going to cost him something. And so he was just out there. Now, it never says how long he was out there. Mm -hmm. All we know is he was out there. Mm -hmm. Just like, you can't remember. You can remember how long he was out there. But when you were out there, you just out there. Yeah. Time is just, whatever. Time ain't nothing when you out there. Yeah. It's just, you out there until you out there until rock pop. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like it's like a free fall, and you think you're having fun. You don't you don't know that you're falling, yeah. right? And that's basically how we are. We just fall, fall yeah. we just fall. We're yeah. falling, we're falling until your sure catches us, yeah. catches our attention. That's the only safety net. <laughs> There's no other safety net. Come on, come all right? There is no other safety net. So that's when he out there. He out there spending lavishly. You know how they show you people with the little money guns in the club. <laughs> he's just out there just going crazy. He going fuck out there, you know? Because he's never been out there. He's never been out there. He's only heard about what was out there. And now he gets an opportunity to experience what's out there. Mm -hmm. And so he's prodigal in all of his deeds. See, that's how, that's what happens sometimes in the church. Right now, I grew up in the church, but my kids are growing up in church. Come on, come on, right? Why well, I grew up in church? But I, I've seen it. When I came in as an unbeliever, how, how people were the same age as me, weren't really on fire for God. Weren't yeah. really on fire for the Most High. And what happens? They tiptoe out of there. You see, I didn't already came out. I was deep in the darkness. You know what I mean? And he snatched me up. Yeah. But for them, oh, I want to tiptoe over here because, oh, I heard about this over there. Oh, I heard. And I'm like, man, you don't even want to be out there, bro. Yeah. I'm like, you sisters, you don't want to be out there. I've been out there. Yeah. To 
the deepest of deep. When they say he's, he called out to the deep yeah. and he reaches out and touches you out and brings you and snaps you out into his marvelous light. And that's what he did for me. But for the prodigal, he like one of them kids that grew up in church. Always growing up under the pastor and, you know, the, the usher boys, the mothers, and all these other people. And never get an opportunity to just really test the waters of yeah. life. Yeah. And so they feel like they're missing something until they get out there. Yeah. And the thing about it is, some of them get out there and they never come back. You got to understand, sometimes when the Most High puts you in a situation, He means for you to stay in that situation. Yeah. Perhaps you should. Perhaps you were raised in church because you need to stay in church because He knows if you get out there, you may not come back to Him. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Perhaps, perhaps that's what it is. So He was prodigal in His deed. He joins Himself to a to a man, a citizen of that country. I Meaning He has to get a job now. Uh, a guy who didn't have to work probably never worked outside of what he had to do with his dad, had to go get a job, mm -hmm. feed swine mm -hmm. that, he wouldn't know, that he wouldn't even eat. He wouldn't even eat a swine. He wouldn't even eat a pig. Why? Because he was Hebrew. He was an Israelite. So that was off the limit. Off that, that's off the menu. Mm -hmm. Alright? No baby back, nothing. Alright? <laughs> They're not doing nothing on the barbecue pit. That he's, not, he's not eating that stuff. Come on, come But on. he goes to go feed the swine. And he looks down into when he's feeding them, and he's like the husk. He said he was fain, and he was glad. He would have been glad to eat that stuff. Could you imagine how far you gotta be yeah. from where you came to want to eat what a pig would eat? Pig would eat their own yeah, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> they would eat their own stuff. Pigs are that disgusting. Okay? Now I know. I know I'm not, I'm not gonna go there, but you know, but you know, who who had like a good piece of bacon? But I know that goes, you know, I'm just saying, just because just because you try not to eat that, don't mean you never ate it before. Yeah, it, was, yeah. it was good when I ate it. It's good, but it's not good for you. So, but that's when he found himself. Gladly, he was he would have been glad glad to eat that slop that that pig had, that that pig was eating. And then he even got, the, and then the, the, the scripture says that he was down there feeding them, and then he came to himself. Almost a, the, a good word is quicken. Yeah. It, it, it was quicken. Mm -hmm. Quicken means to give life to. Yeah. Right? And so he was down there Whoa. feeding, feeding the pig, and boom, the spirit quickened him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm to my hold on, man. My father. How many, how many people in my father's house don't just have bread, but they have enough to give away? Yeah. They have extra. And I'm out here feeding swine and willing to eat mm -hmm. what they want, wow. what they're eating. Only if somebody would offer it to me. If somebody, they said, oh, somebody offered it to him, but no one offered it to him. And so he's down there, and he remembers. That's what we found out at ourselves sometimes. We get out there, we go do whatever we want, however we want. We, we just squander everything, just about everything the Most High gives us. The only thing we have left is repentance. Yeah. And we get out there, we eat the slop of the world. And we say it's great. We actually do what he didn't do. We eat the slop. We eat the husk of the world. That, feel, that, that stuff, that, that, that throwaway stuff. You know, has somebody ever gave you some some leftovers and you like, what is it? What, what is this? I, I'm not a dog, I'm not an animal. Yeah. You know, they used to do that at my job. They would, you know, the people, you know, the corporate people would come in and they would eat their food and then they would, like, like we dogs or something, after y'all had picked through it, you want to come give it to us? Oh no, I'm not eating that stuff. If I can't eat what you eat, or come give me a plate, I don't want the food. And so he found himself willing to eat what he wouldn't have normally eat, and we do the same exact thing. And we call it good. We call it, it feels good to us, tastes good to us. Oh, it's so exuberant. You know how they feel. Oh, this is this is live. This is life right here. This is lively. Yeah. This is lively. That's what it is. 
It's carnality. It's it's your flesh. It's our flesh yeah. getting yeah. ministered to. Yeah. Because you gotta understand that the God of this world ministers to your flesh. Uh -huh. He knows exactly what you will like yeah. and how you will like it. Yeah. And he'll start you off with that appetizer. Mm -hmm. And then you find yourself eating some stuff that you would have normally had five years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, y'all better, better catch that. Ah, mm -hmm. I ain't gonna do that. Ooh, never. Not me. I don't do that kind of stuff. But yeah, man, there's something about sin. Sin is never satisfied. That's it. That's it. it will never be full. I don't care how much you feed it, it always wants more. That's it. That's it. Always wants more. It's going to want more and more and more until it drains you dry. dry. Yeah. Until, until you can't sin no more, but through your mind and your heart. Because you can mess up your body now. You lay up in the bed somewhere. That's what it does. So he had a prodigal mind. He went to having a, a prodigal heart. And then he went to his prodigal deeds. And then what happens? He goes, he goes, and then he, he finds himself going back to the father, to his father. Right? Because now he understands Look, man, I really, I was doing better at home. Right. I was doing better at home. Not just that. I wasn't just doing better at home, but I'm only out here because I chose to come out here. Mm -hmm. I'm only out here because it wasn't like there wasn't enough substance. It wasn't like my father didn't love me. It's not like I didn't have enough. Yeah. I, I'm out here all because of me. And that's how we are. We're only out here because all of what we've done it's, all, it's because of us. Yeah. We leave the most high. The most high doesn't leave us. Yeah. He doesn't leave us. If he say, I'll always be with you, I, leave, I won't leave you or forsake you. What does that mean? It's us who leaves him. We leave him. And so that's what he did. And so he travels back to the Father. I'm sure now you got to understand. He probably even gave up that donkey. He probably sold that donkey for a little money so he don't continue to ride his living. You know, he went ahead and did that and then he just went home. When he went home, you gotta understand, he probably went home with just clothes on his back, maybe some sandals, you know, some Gucci slides or something. Not really but some slides or something, you know. And what else? Nothing. Probably walked the whole way or hitchhiked a ride on somebody's camel or donkey the whole way. But he says the father saw him. So wherever he got dropped off, we've got to, this, this is one of the most, to me, one of the most amazing parts of the story. Because he says that wherever, wherever the son was, the father was out there looking. For him. Could you imagine, right? That's just like people who live, parents who lose children, and they're always searching for them. It's five, 10, 15 years, and you see missing signs everywhere. I mean, that's still on social media. Find them, let them come home safe, let them come home safe. I can imagine it's the same way. Every day, coming out there, is my son coming home. Sun down, not today. Go back. And it was probably a part of his routine. And one day, the father decides he's going to come out here. And it has to be early enough to see him in the distance. And he sees his son afar off. And he runs to him. And he kisses him. He embraces him and kisses him on his neck. Right? That's, that's what the father wants to do to us. He is constantly like this. He is like this. When are you going to come back? You've been back here long enough. And he said that not to just people outside of the church. He said that to people right in the church. When are you going to come back to me? I, I'm sitting here waiting. But you're not coming back. I'm, I'm being as patient as I can make myself be. And you will not come back to me. 
And he's just waiting. And he's just waiting. And he's going to be like this until one day. Hmm. Until one day he comes out of the clouds. Hmm. And then after that, it'd be too late. And so he came from prodigal mind, prodigal heart, prodigal deeds, and he became a prodigal person. That's how we become. When we become, we, when we, when we are operating continuously and habitually and perpetually in sin yeah, yeah. against him, we become prodigal people. That's it. That's good. We become a prodigal people. And that's where you have an issue. Because now there's multiple. It's not just the one son. It's not this one off. It's not that one sheep out of the 100. That the other 99. No, no, no. It's not that now. It's multiple thousands, if not millions, of powerful people out here who need to come back. Come back to Yahweh. Come back to the Most High. But no, we don't do that. We don't do that. But we are prodigal people. We, and when I say we are prodigal people, I'm talking about everyone who believes in Yeshua, in Jesus, the Messiah. The only way, the truth and the life, the only way by which man can be saved. No other way. If we don't come back to him, we'll find ourselves left over to a reprobate mind. And if you don't know what a reprobate is, it basically, a, a good word for reprobate is disgusting mind. Whatever you want to do in your heart, he's going to let you do. And it's going to all be evil. I was, I would even venture to say we probably live in a reprobate world. Um, so when you become a reprobate people, and that people is gathered together, whether it be this nation or another nation or whatever, it becomes a prodigal nation. Right? Collectively. Now, I understand that there's many millions who serve the Most High, who love God, right? Who are saved. But what about those? But you got to understand that also as a nation, you, be, you can become prodigal. Yeah. Look, look at the, the Israelites after coming out of Egypt. Literally, after coming out with great substance, seeing all ten plagues, yeah. seeing them destroy all the enemies and the Pharaoh, drowning them in the place that they walked to, mm-hmm. get to another place and they're already murmuring. Mm-hmm. They're talking about let's go, let's go back to, to the leeks and onion. Mm-hmm. My question would be, why would I go back to leeks and onions when he has promised me milk and honey? Tell you what, go, just go get an onion and just eat, just eat it, and tell me how it tastes. And go get you some some honey and go eat eat that, and tell me how it tastes to you. I, I would much rather have the honey of the onions, yeah, yeah, the milk of the leeks, mm-hmm. right? Freedom over bondage, and he offers us that, but we think simply because we are in bondage, but we have chains enough to move. See, you got to change enough to move so you don't think you're in bondage. So you got, see, my wife and I, when we working out, uh, I, I got to admit, I, I stopped a little bit, so, you know, things, things are not as flat as they work, once were, but, but, let me say this. When we would put, like, the ankle weights on, right, you put the ankle weights on, at first you feel it. You feel those ankle weights. You can feel the weight, like, oh my goodness, this is really working me out. After some time, you get used to the weight, and it doesn't feel like it's there. See, that's what happened to so many of us. We, we've gotten so used to the change, we don't really feel them no more. We think we're free, but we're not really free. We're in bondage. We don't even know. Now, huh, but whom the Son is set free is free indeed. So you are free. But guess what? We have to remember that we don't go back to the yoke of bondage. Because you can chain back up. Oh yeah. 
Don't think Satan be like, oh yeah, you free, I'm going to go ahead and let you go. No, 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 no. He's going to always want to put them chains back on you. Yes. So you can feel, feel like you're free, but be in bondage, because that's what he needs. Yeah. Yeah. That's what he needs. And so the son, the son is walking back in, and the scripture says that the father told him the, the, the father told him to kill the fat calf. You know what I mean? That, now back in the day, they would have had that calf that was just fed. They, they fed it enough to get really, really fat and big. That was the whole idea. To, to feed it, get it fat, yeah. right? So when it's time to eat, they got a whole lot of meat, a whole lot of something ready for them. And so that's what happened. And so he said, bring me the ring, bring me the coat, bring me the fat cat. Yeah. My son, who was once, who were once lost, or pronounced dead, is alive. Mm -hmm. He says he's alive again. He said he's alive again. Listen to what he says. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was dead, but then he's alive again. See, you got to understand, the further we get away from the most high, it, it. the dead we become. Mm. Come on, come on, come but on. But when we get up into his presence, yes. you are alive. See, people don't want to really talk about the presence, but in the presence, there's fullness of joy. Yes. And at his right hand, there's pleasures forevermore. Pleasures that we don't even really consider. What are these pleasures that he talks about? Pleasures forevermore. The, the presence, mm -hmm. the presence of the Most High is, is something that if you don't experience it, if you've never experienced it, mm -hmm. I, would, I would tell you something like this. When you experience the presence of the Most High, yeah. it gives you the boldness that you need. Mm -hmm. But you can stand against the world yes. that wants to stand against the God of the scriptures. Mm -hmm. you, you can do that. But only when you've been in his presence. Mm -hmm. See, it's, it's something about that presence. Yeah. And I'm talking about that stuff that they experienced in the, in the scriptures. I'm talking about that Moses stuff. Yeah. I'm talking about Ezekiel when, when he saw the train of the road filled with temple. Yeah. That kind of stuff. That empowering presence of of the Most High. That the stuff that he, he answers questions. He answers questions in his presence that you don't even have to move your mouth yeah. to ask. Come on, come on. The presence is something. The presence is something else. Yeah. You can have great preaching all the time. You can have you can have great uh worship for the most part. But singing, let me say that. But there's something about that presence. I want the presence. I don't want to be, I don't want to be a prodigal person. Mm. Right? I don't want to, I don't want to live in a prodigal nation. Yeah. I don't want to live in a debauchery. Look at, look at the stuff. I can only speak for the country I live in. I can only speak from the country I live in. I don't care where I'm at. You can only speak for where you've been and where you are. Yeah. And what you've seriously prayed about. And when you look at the stuff that they pass as law that goes against every law mm -hmm. that the Most High has, you know you're in a prodigal nation. Mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't care who the leaders are. See, I don't, I don't care if you got D-R-I-L by your name. I don't care. Oh, come on. I don't care about that. Yeah. I don't care at all. All I care about is this right here. Mm -hmm. If you can't line it up with this, I can't be a part of what you're doing. Mm. I don't want to be a part of what you're doing. I'm good. I'm good. Some of us are made like that. And he's made us. He said, come out from among us. Yeah. From among them. Mm. Or her, to be specific. Her. Come out from among her. Come out that Babylonian system. Yeah. Yeah, the system that we're living in. This matrix that people are a part of. He tells us to come out from among them. Why? Because he knows. He's already set us apart. He said, he said, Israel apart as a nation. Mm -hmm. And those who have been grafted in through Yeshua. Mm -hmm. Set them apart. Set, set yourself apart. 
Set yourself apart. Because when I get to judge you, I'm going to get them goats. And so he talks, he talks about Israel as a nation. And not just, he, he talks about it in, in Hosea, I think it's Hosea 3, where he begins to talk about Israel as a nation. And he says that, that we're like a, he says that we're like a, a, a backsliding uh, calf or a heifer. Right? It, that basically what it means is like, you know how a goat and a ram they can climb up a mountain no matter how rocky it is, they can, yeah, they can yeah. climb up. But this heifer, this heifer right here, every time they try to do it, it's slipping. Yeah. And that's how we act sometimes. Yeah. Usually, all the time, and it's hard. Man. That's why some, sometimes it's got to, sometimes you got to, you have to worship. You have to praise. You have to, yeah. you have to do yeah. all those things that people yeah. say like, you have to do all that. Sometimes you have to separate yourself. Why? Because if not, you're going to be like one of these heifers out here. Them heifers that you're trying to keep up with, you know, falling and everything, that all they do is fall. Yeah. Every time, oh, Lord, I'm just falling. I'm just, oh, but he came over and he was just, uh, she came, she hit me up at 2 o'clock, you know, all this foolishness. Yeah, yeah. These heifers out here. And that's how Israel was a heifer. It was a heifer to him. And so we've got to go beyond just having a, a powerful mind. Mm -hmm. We have to cast down every vain and wicked imagination that you're trying to exalt yourself about the knowledge of who Christ is. That's we have to cast that down. Mm -hmm. I know we like to entertain them thoughts. Yeah. And that's the that's what the devil wants us to do. That's what Satan wants us to do. Mm -hmm. He wants us to meditate on those very thoughts that he puts in our mind. Why? Because you know, if you meditate on it long enough, it'll get in your heart. Mm -hmm. And when it get in your heart, oh man, you gonna look to do it. Like all them leads. And then when you do that, you already know now I'm a prodigal person. And then when we do that collectively, we become a prodigal nation. He wants us to come back to him. I mean, take me back. That, 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 that should be our goal. Come, not just come back. Lord, take me back. I worship you for real in spirit and in truth. Take me back to the place where I would weep just the thought of your name in, in your presence. Take me back to the place where I served. I didn't work in the church, I served you. And people looked at it as working. Take me back to the to the place where I didn't care where the word came from as long as it came from you to whatever vessel. I just want the word of the most high to penetrate. My heart and my very existence. Take us back. Take us back to the place where we were so busy to where two hours of a church service is too much for us. Take us back to the place to where we didn't have to be pumped up by some preacher or some pastor yeah. or some visiting prophet doing lines for you to get a prophecy. Mm -hmm. take, take us back to that place. Take, take us back to that place where people really, really sought your face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I don't really think there's enough people getting on their knees. Get on their face. See, posturing? People don't really want to get posturing no more. Come on, come on. It sounds good. <laughs> worship sounds good to people now. But do they worship? Mm. Praise sounds good to people. But do you? But do you praise? Yeah. You see, it sounds good now. It's all become, a lot of it has become, when I say all, a lot of it becomes theatrical. He knows how to hook you. He knows how to get you all in your flesh. He knows how to make you run around in circles and spit up. And then you go right back out, popcorn. Not, you're not even edified by the message. You can't even remember the message. But all you know is you ran a marathon. All you know is somebody fucked out of their stuff. See, we think quitting means music. Oh, all this, all this, all this old churchy stuff, all this. No, I don't know, man. That's spirit of kind of me. I don't know what that is. Quitting is to give life. Yeah. Meaning when you when you're thought to particle, boom, you quicken, you give life to that. Like, oh no. I'm thinking of those things which are pure and holy. 
and righteous and a good report. Those are the things I'm going to think of. And that's what we should think of. And so the son finds himself not just, not just in a position of being a prodigal, but he, he's in a position of where he found himself being welcomed back. See, sometimes we think that the most high won't welcome us back. Yeah. Oh man, we've been out there too long. We've done too much. We've said too much. You know, we think that the life that we're living that was so contrary yeah. Yeah. is something that the most high can deliver us from. And then you read in the scriptures where Paul begins to write certain things and he says, you know, some of you were homosexual. Some, some of you were blasphemous. Some of you were fornicators. Some of you were liars. So we got to understand that he, if he did it back then, yeah. and he's still the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, oh, then he can do it today. We've got to allow people to come back. And right now, the whole message, the whole, the whole message should be, come on, come back. Man, look, I don't care what you're doing out here on the streets. I don't care what you did yesterday. I don't care what you did right before I came to talk to you. Yeah. Come back to Yah. Yeah. Come, come back to God. Come back. He, he's willing to take you back. You don't have to be out there all by yourself. You don't, as a matter of fact, you're only out there because you choose to be out there. Yeah. Yeah. You're not out there because he pushed you out. The most high didn't push people out of his presence. But there are requirements in order to get to his presence. Mm. And to stay there. The son didn't want to do it, but we have an opportunity. Every breath you take, you have an opportunity to come back to him. That's it, that's it. Maybe you've been prodigal in your mind. Maybe you've been prodigal in your thoughts. Maybe you've been prodigal in your deeds. Maybe you are just a prodigal person. This is your opportunity to come back to him. You don't have to stay out there. Whether you're in here or on life, you do not have to stay there. This is your opportunity. You have multiple opportunities and you will be given multiple opportunities. But every one day, one of those opportunities are going to be the last opportunity. And the thing about that is, no one knows when the last opportunity is going to be presented. And so you better take this opportunity as perhaps the last opportunity. For today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that he's calling you back to him. This is the day. This is the day that he's calling you back. The Lord is going to watch this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, the most high, the most high, is always going to be standing, waiting for us, for those who are vaccinated, for those who went wayward, for those who left the presence of the Father to come back. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what nation you are. It doesn't matter if your skin color. It doesn't matter what you heard. It doesn't matter what you feel. It matters what his word says. He says that if you confess, that you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. For with the mouth one makes confession. And with the heart, one who believes. Do you believe? And if you never believe, if you, if you're out there and you feel like you want to reach out to us, you can reach out to us through email or on Facebook. Send us a message. And we will we'll contact you within a day. We'll pray with you. We'll have a conversation with you. We'll see what you are. We'll do what the Most High calls us to do. 
in order to make sure that you can get back on that road to get back in the Father's presence or in the Father's presence. Hallelujah. 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 So I'm grateful, and I know that you can do the same for anybody else. And I've actually in a few months into my salvation. After the divine encounter, I've actually been to the best. And that's why I say you've got to be very careful when we get out of here. Because something about Satan is hard to get back. It's hard to get back to that place. Back there, then you know how not to go back. It's not going to be worth it. Hallelujah. Who is just, who gives us God, gives seed to the sower. And so God, these 
time to get things done. If somebody asks me what a brush, what a lotion, you got a comb, can you brush up my hair? I can't find my teeth, all kinds of stuff is going on. So, <laughs>